Good afternoon. Thanks for joining 13 News on WTHR Plus. I'm Dustin Grove. Can you feel the difference? If you've been outside, you certainly have. We're kicking off a cool stretch as unseasonably cool air replaces the heat and humidity we've been suffering through the past few days. This is a live look now at Indianapolis. Nice afternoon. Clouds have cleared a little bit and we're around 80 degrees. Meteorologist Angela Buckman is here with details on this refreshing break. Refreshing is right. Make some outdoor plans now for the next couple of days, especially this weekend, because it's okay. gonna be even more refreshing as we get into Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures right now, as Dustin mentioned, pretty close to 80 degrees. We have exactly 80 in Connorsville, currently 78 Crawfordsville, Morse Reservoir, it's also 78 degrees in Noblesville, currently 81 in Greensburg, and we have 78 degrees in Indianapolis. It's taken a while, but the clouds are finally starting to clear and that clearing trend will take over over the next several hours. Mainly uh, clear as we head through late evening temperatures very mild will be 75 to 80 degrees all the way through 8 p.m. Once the sun goes down, those temperatures will drop into the low 70s. Not as warm, not as muggy, a mild start. Kids are back at it at school, headed to school tomorrow morning for our Thursday. We'll be in the low to mid 60s under a mainly clear sky. May get some afternoon clouds the next couple of days. Otherwise, we've got some sunshine on the way. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 80s on Thursday afternoon, right where we should be for this time of year and then head down just a bit upper 70s and low 80s on Friday. It becomes breezy Friday afternoon as a cold front starts to work its way through the state. That's going to bring that more refreshing air as we head into the weekend. We'll be in the upper 70s and low 80s Friday, but you can see the low to mid 70s up to our northwest. We don't get quite that cool, but we are expecting three days in the 70s all starting on Friday. Weather system along the East Coast that was once Hurricane Debbie continues to bring some heavy rain to the southeast through the mid Atlantic states and then it will eventually depart the East Coast, the northeastern sections of the country as we get into late Friday and as we head into the weekend. Cold front for us will clear that weather system off to our east. So for us over the next couple of days, rain chances are near zero and we're going to see a big drop in that muggy meter. Here are the rain chances for the next several several days near zero all the way through the seven day forecast muggy meter low as well. How about the temperatures? We're in the low to mid 80s tomorrow, upper 70s, low 80s Friday and in the 70s with plenty of sunshine this weekend. All right, sounds good. We'll see you in a few minutes again, Angela. Thank you. Safe Haven boxes have been popping up all over Indiana for years now in one local area of Indy has put one in every one of its fire stations. Our Marina Silva reports from Wayne Township. This is the baby box at station 84 in Wayne Township. Now all fire stations in Wayne Township have a safe haven baby box. The boxes are paid for through donation. The point of the baby box is for parents to surrender a baby without consequences. The baby is put in the box and immediately firefighters and staff are alerted. Just a few years ago, the first baby was surrendered in Wayne Township. It was less than a minute before the baby was in the hands of firefighters. I just want I want people to know that there are options um, that we're here to help take care of, of newborns um, that, that it's a safe place to go and we're here for them. Firefighters tell me it's always something that could happen, but you never expect it when it does. Reporting in Wayne Township, Marina Silva 13 News. Marina, thank you. Another story we're following today an INPD officers use of force is under review following the deadly shooting of a two and a half year old dog. This happened Thursday at a home near Adams Street and Roosevelt Avenue. That's where officers were sent following a report of some sort of domestic disturbance. They say shortly after getting to the scene, a dog ran out a door and bit an officer on the foot. That's when an officer shot the dog. The dog's owner shared surveillance footage of the incident, claiming it doesn't show the dog charging nor biting the officer. The new school year is underway and state law now requires educators to intervene when elementary students are missing too much class. Under the new truancy law, schools have to report students who miss more than three weeks of school. Washington Township schools already had a plan in place. That district monitors attendance regularly. Then social workers reach out to families who are struggling. Third is to, to build a plan with the families to work with them on that before we even have to go and involve uh, Marion County Prosecutor's Office. And so that's 
uh, work that we have done previously that actually was in collaboration with Marion County Prosecutor's Office previously, and that's what we're going to continue to work on in the district. Before the pandemic, 5% of Washington Township students were considered chronically truant. Now it's nearly double that, and educators say there is a direct correlation between attendance and students doing well. Now to the race for the White House and the man Vice President Harris tapped as her new running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. Now he is not a political newcomer, but he's also not well known outside of his state. Here's senior Washington correspondent Hallie Jackson. Governor Tim Walz stepping onto the biggest stage of his political career. I couldn't be prouder to be on this ticket. Joining Vice President Kamala Harris at a rally in Swing State, Pennsylvania Tuesday. So we got 91 days. My God, that's easy. We'll sleep when we're dead. It's the latest stop on a journey that began in rural Nebraska, where he was raised. After enlisting in the Army National Guard at 17, he moved to Minnesota in 1996 to teach social studies and coach football. Walls open about the struggles he and his wife Gwen faced to get pregnant. Their children born with the help of fertility treatments. So it wasn't by chance that when we welcome our daughter into the world, we named her Hope. Hope and son Gus making cameos in his posts online. But then we're going to go get some food, corn dog. I'm vegetarian. Turkey then. And then Turkey's meat. Not in Minnesota, turkey special. In 2006, Walls was elected to Congress, flipping a red house seat blue. A stalwart union backer with a moderate voting record and as governor, moving to more progressive policies. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. Minnesota, under walls, enshrining the right to an abortion after Roe versus Wade was overturned and instituting universal free school meals. Conservatives taking aim at the state's protections for gender-affirming care for trans youth, eligibility for driver's licenses for undocumented immigrants, and new gun restrictions like background checks, passed with the support of Walls, a gun owner and avid hunter. Walls coming under fire for his response to protests after George Floyd's murder in 2020. Democrats defending him. He called in the National Guard and it made a major difference after some incredibly violent, violent riot. Now, allies touting Walls' record and what they see as his relatability, while Republicans look to paint him as extreme. He's a very, uh, very liberal man, and he's a shocking pick, and I'm, I'm thrilled. I could not be more thrilled. That was Hallie Jackson reporting. Today, former President Trump said it is important for the country that he and Vice President Kamala Harris face off in a debate. Trump canceled a previously scheduled debate with Harris in September because President Biden, who he was originally set to debate, dropped out of the race. Harris's campaign pounced on the cancellation, framing the former president as, quote, afraid to debate. Well, Trump then proposed a September 4th debate against Harris in Pennsylvania. Harris balked at that idea, writing on X, she still plans to appear at the previously scheduled debate next month. We'll continue to follow where that goes. It was a chilly and wet morning at Grand Park in Westfield. Colts training camp continues through it all, and our Dominic Miranda has an injury update now stemming from today's practice. A welcome change in the weather here for Colts training camp day nine. It's been hot all camp long. A welcome shift today, 9 a.m. start time, a little crisp in the air, kind of felt like fall. It was spitting rain at us, but good work nonetheless for the Colts today. A guy who stuck out all camp long that we've been telling you here on 13, that'd be second year wide receiver Josh Downs. The connection between him and Anthony Richardson has been evident all camp long. They've been clicking on all cylinders. However, today, early on in practice, a seven on seven period, Josh Downs caught a ball on the sideline, was taken to the ground by safety. Nick Cross got up, was having trouble putting weight on one of his legs. It looked to be an ankle injury. That's certainly something you do not want to see one of your best playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. He left practice, was looked at by trainers, did not return to the practice field here on day nine of training camp. Both Shane Steichen and Nick Cross on this injury after practice. We got to be smart. I mean, you know, we're, we're competing like crazy, but we got to stay off the ground and uh, we can't go down. It's bottom line. We playing football, we competing. So, I mean, Josh, my guy, I love that boy to death. So, I mean, we competing. It's unfortunate, you know, and I got to go see what's up with him when I go inside. 
So that's certainly something we're going to monitor. Josh Downs' health as training camp progresses. Also something we will learn on Friday after the off day tomorrow. Shane Steichen telling us he will tell us who will play in, on Sunday against the Denver Broncos in the Colts' first preseason game. So hopefully we'll see starters for at least a little bit of that game as we inch forward to the NFL season. More coming for you here from Colts training camp at 6 o'clock for now. Though at Grand Park, I'm Dominic Miranda, 13 Sports. All right, we'll see you at 6 over on 13. Don, thank you. Now to your prime time lineup at the Olympics starting at 8 tonight. The men's 110-meter hurdle semis followed by men's diving and the springboard semis. Then at 9, it's track and field. First up, the men's 400-meter hurdle semis and then the women's pole vault final. We've got 70s and 80s in the seven day. If you're headed to the state fair tomorrow, temperatures will be in the low to mid 80s, expecting plenty of sunshine and a warm afternoon, but seasonal for this time of year and not too muggy. And then check out these numbers starting Friday. We're expecting several days in the upper 70s and low 80s. Friday with a mix of sun and clouds, a little bit of a breeze as the secondary cold front arrives 79. We will feel that reinforcing shot of some cooler air this weekend. Saturday 76, Sunday 78. Ooh, it doesn't get much better than that, does it? Is it the weekend already? For August, too. <laughs> I know. No kidding. All right, Angela, thank you. And thank you for watching. That's the latest from WTHR Plus and 13 News. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you later.